Hello. I hope I find you well. And uh, today we want to get started with our video tutorials on basics of VB.NET. And I just want to show you around our IDE and the components that you have to expect when using the platform. And the IDE that we are using in this particular illustration is uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Enterprise 2015, which you would find uh, to be almost similar to all the other versions that come before it. And like we said, we are going to seek to use um, Microsoft VS 2010 upwards, at least uh, for this particular course. So you'd find uh, every time that you open the application, it should be able to bring you to something that is known as the start page. And the start page is uh, links to many different areas of uh, the IDE. So if you check it in the middle of the page, you get to have your start where you get a uh, new project, open project, and you also have uh, shortcuts to recent projects that you'd have done and closed. But uh, where we would really want to, to look at today is the new project. So if you've just started, you want to say new project, and uh, it should bring to you a window like this. And you need to make sure that your set focus is on Visual Studio. And uh, you choose uh, Windows Forms application because we are going to be using Windows Forms application. You are then supposed to give it a name. And like we said in our discussion where we were talking about uh, naming conventions, we said one of the ways that we would want to use is um, Pascal casing and um, our camel casing. And in this case, because we are giving name to your project, we use uh, Pascal casing. So we just want to call this um, Hello World application and uh, always remember that uh, those who do programming they say you can't start uh, a programming language without doing a hello world application and so apparently the name that we then give to the project is also the name that it will give to the directory for that particular solution and it will also create uh, solution files and uh, it uses the same name to create the solution files and in this case it's hello world application and if you take a look again there you'd see that hw and our a is in capital letter showing uh, how we are actually using our pascal casing so after saying okay it should be able to create for you the first uh, view and that first view has um, five components that we really want to, to take a look at. We have uh, to the left your toolbox, and our toolbox are normally grouped. We have um, common controls, we have containers, we have menu and toolbars, we have data, we have components and all that. But what we're going to be using for our introduction is the common controls. Those are the common controls that we're going to be using for this one. And uh, the center, you then find uh, the design area, which is also the programming area. And our design area is normally given a name by default, and that name by default follows the name of the form, which is the first object that you see and it is also going to be acting as a container in quotes for all the other controls that are going to be adding to that particular form. Uh, below here you then find uh, details about the output when you then run you would find this is where you 
get your error lists and uh, the warnings and everything. And to your right, you then find the Solution Explorer, where we, if we click like that, you'd see that you, it's showing or it's navigating through the Solution Hello World application, where you have your uh, references. You also have uh, the objects. In this case, the form that is contained in that particular that particular application. You also then have something that is known as the properties window. Normally that can only be activated if you select an, an object there and after selecting an object should be able to show you the properties that can be changed uh, about that particular particular object. And uh, the first ones, the first uh, properties that we, I might want to, to show us is uh, how we change um, the text, which apparently the text property is what is written on top. It is what is supposed to be the caption of that particular object. And uh, in this case, we are changing the text of the form and we would want it to change to uh, Hello World uh, application. Hello World application. And uh, you'll also realize that uh, since this one is not uh, really an identifier, it is just a string, and it is that string that is going to be written on top of our object. We do not necessarily have to be worried about spaces, so we can live with the spaces. But when it comes to changing the name, which is always on the design of that particular properties window, we always say it, uh, conventionally we start with our prefix and our prefix for forms is frm and we're going to be using uh, camel casing so it's frm and we would want this to be hello we would want the form to be hello and uh, that is we have changed our our properties that is the text property and uh, the name property of that particular object you might also change other things like you might change uh, the background color you might change the background color and um, we want to change it probably to cyan uh, I know that color there could be arguments on what color that is exactly but you might change it to that after changing uh, that color there are many other properties that you can also change you can change the size you can change uh, the font you can change the four color you can change uh, the border style you can change uh, the way in which uh, that particular form behaves during runtime and all that other you can change a lot of a lot of properties but uh, for now i just want you to see how we can drag and how we can drop uh, object into the form and we would want to, to, to drag um, a label and uh, label just by the name it is apparently a label it's normally something that we use to communicate to the user of the application uh, it is uh, an object that is not editable during runtime uh, of course it can be edited using code when it's showing output but you can't edit using a keyboard or using a mouse. So we would want to have a label and that label we want to change once again the text and we would want to change the name property. And uh, the text that we would want to change, we would want it to be uh, full name. We would want it to say full name. And as for full name label, we would want it uh, to have a name and that name is found uh, under the design and we would want the name to be LBL, LBL name, if you remember well, L LBL is the prefix for labels, would also want to have um, uh, somewhere where we are going to input our first, our full name, and uh, we are going to use uh, a text box, and that text box, the name is normally what we change, and we say that uh, we have TXT as our prefix, and we are going to call it TXT name. As for the text, for a text box, we don't necessarily need to change the text property since uh, we are going to be changing the text property during runtime. We can then have um, a, a button, and that button is by default button 1. I'm sure you've been seeing that as we were um, going through this particular tutorial, that every time that you are using objects uh, in uh, pb.net, they are given... Um, 
a name or default name with a number like if it's a form there will be a form one form two if you have a text box you have text box one text box two if you are using a label you have label one level two level three and the same applies with your buttons you have button ones up to button any other number that you'll be using and that makes it even more important to rename our objects since you don't necessarily need to have the hassles of saying of remembering what button one was what button 25 was what button 222 was so button one we're going to change the name and um, our prefix is btn so we're going to call it btn click we're going to call it btn click and uh, we would want to change the text as well we would want to change what is written on the button and uh, we want uh, the button to say click we would want the button to say click and as you see there it is already changed uh, let's just try to make sure that whatever we're designing is uh, nice so we, we change it and we make it like that and uh, probably the form as well during runtime would want uh, it to to be central when it runs so we change the start position to center of the screen now now that we we have all this you can see that we can come here and uh, say start uh, that is our run and uh, as we run now uh, we have to wait sometimes a bit just for it to be able to to be compiling and doing all sorts of things and uh, what it does is when it runs it should be able to show us the form there is our form you would find one thing about our form for now you can be able to to get your name you can be able to get your name in there uh, john smith uh, but if you click nothing is happening on the click nothing is happening on the click and uh, that means we need to make sure that we build um, an event handler we want to make sure that we handle the click event so that uh, the the application actually does something for now it's not doing anything so let's get back and see how and what we can do to make sure that it it gives us it gives us uh, uh, something so we can stop the debug we can stop the debug uh, there and then we come back to our, our design window and after coming back to our design window we now want to build an event handler around this particular object which is our uh, btn click so we double click there for us to view the code and uh, that is the code uh, let me try to highlight it so that you see that is something that um, has already been done for us where it has uh, created a private sub uh, and uh, that is the event headline that's what we are going to to be looking at and uh, this is what we would want it to do we want after clicking we want it to show a message box and uh, that message box we would want uh, it uh, to show a message box and uh, but the question is normally for a message box to be shown it would want uh, to show uh, some a string so there is need of a string inside here there's need of a string inside there that it will to, to show or that it will carry through the message box so what we want to have now is uh, to capture what uh, the user uh, head has input into the text box so we come and we might say uh, dim uh, str as string as string mstr as a string so that uh, is our variable string and uh, now it's gray it's uh, underlined using green because the variable is not used yet so we come and we say string is equal we now are uh, assigning value to that particular str variable and uh, where are we getting that we're getting that value from uh, txt name which is the text box uh, dot text that is the property text the text property of the txt name is what we are going to be assigning to uh, uh, str so we say hello hello and then we use uh, a concatenator we would want to use a concatenator normally in VB we use plus or we use ampersand as a concatenator and then we say str so it should be able to do something now now that we have an event handler around the button should you be able to to do something now so let's try by 
up and running and see what comes out now. Now, full name, we are saying uh, we use John Smith once again. Let's say you then come and say John Smith and then you click. Now you see, it's now saying, hello, John Smith. So this is now doing something. You can actually say, okay, uh, and you can stop debugging uh, to, if you are satisfied, uh, you can even enter other names. Uh, you can have other names like uh, X, uh, Y, Y, and then you say, click, and then you say, hello. So it's what it is doing here is taking that string literal which was hello and it's combining it with whatever we have uh, input as our full name apparently this is our first uh, hello world application i hope um, it helped and i hope we uh, will find it helpful and we will also get through and see how other applications more than uh, where we'll be adding more controls, we'll behave and, and work well. Thank you very much.